Hi, this is Kevin at uh, Ben Lomond Historic Site, and I'm standing here in one of the more unique buildings uh, on the property, and this is the former slave quarters that was built probably in about 1830, roughly the same time as the main house was constructed here at Ben Lomond Historic Site. This is a very unique building, not just on the site, but in out, throughout all of Prince William County, uh, because it's one of only three still standing slave quarters that still exist within the entire county. So one of the key stories that we tell at Ben Lomond Historic Site is the story of slavery in Prince William County and Northern Virginia, and then more specifically, what the life of the uh, enslaved was like here at Ben Lomond. Inside this building and at this site, we not only tell the story of slavery, but we can also tell the story of freedom, because this property was once part of a plantation called Cancer Plantation that was owned by Robert Carter III. And Robert Carter III is famously known for being uh, somebody that freed uh, over 400 of his slaves in 1791. And it was the, actually the largest emancipation of slaves until the American Civil War. So who was Robert Carter III? He was born in 1732 and was a member of one of the first families of Virginia, a very prominent family throughout Virginia history. And at just a very young age, Carter inherited 16 different plantations of which Cancer Plantation, today's Ben Lomond was one of them, and those 16 plantations comprised 65,000 acres of land. Now, despite his prominent status uh, in Virginia society, Carter actually retired from public life prior to the American Revolution, and so he was not involved, though he did support the American cause, he was not involved in the Continental Congress or the movement for American independence uh, at all. During Carter's private life, he focused on many different endeavors. But one of the ones that was most important to him was making his vast land holdings and his many plantations financially successful. Of course, his financial success was built upon the backs of his enslaved laborers. However, Robert Carter III was a very different slave owner than many others in Virginia. It is recorded that he rarely whipped his slaves. And also, the survival rate or the, the population increase of his uh, enslaved laborers on his different plantations was double the rate of other plantations in Virginia. Uh, which, even though Carter did purchase uh, future enslaved laborers, which means and shows us that his, uh, the health of the enslaved laborers on his property was actually quite uh, good. At about the same time that Carter retired from uh, public life into his private life, he also converted to the Baptist church. And he was known for attending services with free and enslaved black men and women. Carter's conversion to the Baptist Church and then also his focus on his land holdings coincided with a law that Virginia passed in 1782 that allowed slave owners to manumit or free uh, their slaves in either their wills or in documents that were uh, certified by county courts. So on August 1st, 1791, Robert Carter III filed what he called a deed of gift that gradually freed 452 of his enslaved men and women. Carter knew that this would be a radical move seen by uh, his neighbors and his friends and uh, other socialites in Virginia, and so that's why he built in the gradual emancipation of his enslaved labor so that not all 452 were freed at once. However, Carter's tactic ultimately did not work, and many neighbors began to uh, express displeasure with, uh, with what Carter had done. And one neighbor even wrote to Carter saying that Carter's uh, gradual emancipation of his enslaved laborers did just as much damage as if Carter had come and burned down people's homes. Uh, so clearly people in Virginia were not a fan of what uh, Carter had just done. Uh, because of this pressure that he faced, Carter actually left his home uh, at Nominee Hall and moved to Baltimore, and he died there in 1804. A year before Carter died in 1803, he wrote to one of his friends, he said, my plans and advice have never been pleasing to the world. And I think that's very telling about Robert Carter III because oftentimes his large emancipation of his enslaved laborers is something that's been forgotten and is often overshadowed by early American history, particularly the founding of our nation with the American Revolution. So Carter's story is one of many great stories that we can tell here uh, at Ben Lomond Historic Site but it shows the great dichotomy here in Virginia between the story of the enslaved and the story of freedom as well that you see at a place like Ben Lomond here in Prince William County.